Welcome to another episode of Let's Write Impossible Music. I'm back in my box, getting ready to make some stuff that does not make too much sense if you were to be writing for humans, but makes so much sense if you're just writing within MuseScore for the MuseScore sounds themselves. So what I've got so far from last time is a whole lot of stuff that's actually playable by people but is a little bit on the difficult side. I've got rhythms that are pretty playable. Nothing too crazy there, but then I have a couple violin things that are uncomfortable. Just kind of mushy and fast and I don't know, it's gonna be a bunch of garbage probably if even really good players, it's probably just not that well written right here if it's being played by anything less than a perfectly quantized robot. And we have another couple hard spots here like this line. I know at least a couple people who could play that, like thank you scientist could play that. But uh, not me! I'm gonna just start some new ideas as 30 second notes you know, just chopping away. Alright, now I'm going to try a little strategy here. I'm going to take this line that's very strange, very weird here, and I'm going to just cut out random notes from it. Turn them into rests. Okay, and now this line is accenting just a couple spots within this broader melody. I'm going to bring that down and have it played real low in the cello. I'm going to add a bass. Cool! And now I'm going to make that the kick drum rhythm. Or, you know, or that. And now I'm going to give it a backbeat, see if we can get this thing to hold together. What if I add another beat to this? Oh man. Let's see what happens if I loop that. If this is the first thing you're watching in the morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> what if I change the drums here? It's <laughs> so zany. It's an interesting rhythm. Let's see how the two pair. Okay. That's an interesting bass part. <laughs> Thank you.
there's sort of an interesting back and forth happening now between the parts where I have these absolute garbagey, muck, mucky, like, makes your head hurt things that resolve into really nice chords. I feel like I'm onto something here with these, these two bars. I've made a bunch of stuff that I thought I had really no idea if it would be good in, or not at all. I have no kind of intuition musically for writing this way uh, for the most part. Most of the ideas that I can rely on or like the things that I feel safe in are um, a bit more contained and have less going on than this. And just as a visceral, like, leave me alone or uh, I'm drilling this into your head feeling, you know, that stuff works. It's a bit of an attack on the listener, and I can get into that. I know a lot of people like that. This part I feel like I could enjoy any time of day. Just, I like it. That's all there is to it. Now that I've gotten one new section that I actually am into, let's attach it to what we got from last time. And see what happens. So I'm going to put in some space here. And I'm going to go grab the part that I particularly enjoyed, which was this. And I'm going to stick it in and see what we get. I think this is one of my favorite parts of writing music, is putting two things next to each other and seeing what the result is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I could probably, <laughs> I could probably loop that. I'm a big loopy boy because I live in 2019. All right, let's see. Cool. I just feel like this should have a triplet kick. Well, that's fun. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> 